The South Congress podcast is a lifestyle show that sometimes crosses over into mature territory. The views expressed are those of the hosts and guests who come from different backgrounds and experiences. Listener discretion is advised. All right, you ready to make the magic happen? I'm always ready to make the magic happen. It is the South Congress podcast, episode 88. My name is Cameron. And I'm Peanut. How are you, sir? Uh, I'm okay. How are you? I'm doing I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. Um a lot of stuff to talk about. Um a lot. It's it's been crazy week. It's been an absolutely insane week on, on a bunch of levels. And and we'll get to stuff as we get to stuff. Mm-hmm. What what's going on with you? How was your week? Uh not very good. We had our uh, final game yesterday. And there's some implications where if we won and if some of the other teams lost by a certain margin, which they did, we would have got in. The fourth seed, uh, we didn't win. Okay. And uh, we're done at a 5-5. Five and five And the, the team that we had, there's just way too much talent to go 5-5 five and five and not make the playoffs. Who'd like, you play uh, yesterday? Uh, Buda Hayes. Okay. The Rebels. Yeah. So you already knew what kind of vibe it was, you know, with the Rebel mascot. So, and that school's been around forever. Yeah. So you knew the vibe. Yeah. You know, and it didn't uh didn't make it any better when it ha- I think at halftime we were down by a touchdown, and it was weird. It was kind of like we had to go through the same tunnel area, mm-hmm. and so uh, one of the other coaches, like um, the guys, he has like the turnover chain that I've been talking about, mm-hmm. and one of the kids goes, "Hey man, let me get that turnover chain since like you know I caused that fumble." I was like, "What a dickhead!" Wow. <laughs> like these kids don't give a fuck. Wow. <laughs> I mean, hey, yeah. you're going to have a turnover chain. Yeah, yeah. You set yourself up. Yeah, that's true. We had no turnovers yesterday. We yeah. we uh, committed about three of them. That didn't help either. So, yeah. So, I don't know. Like I said, it'll be interesting to see what's going to happen because, um, I mean, uh, so, something, ha- something has to change. You know, some kind of personnel change has to happen. Like, it's just there's way too much talent that we had this year. There's going to be a lot of talent coming up next year. And in the next couple of years, and if we have the same results, like I'll put it like this: it's not because we don't have kids that can play. Mm-hmm. I'll just I'll just say that. That's all I'm gonna say. Well, one thing that we talked about a couple of days ago, um, because y'all be pocket watching, mm-hmm. um, like we looked at the uh, salary for the guy who coaches at, at our old high school. Yeah, and he's you know he's making a very good salary to put out a very low brand of football. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess my question is: you say something has to change personnel wise. Mm-hmm. Do the people in charge feel that way? Uh, I think it's weird. I'll just put it like this. We, in the summer, we had a meeting, and from our... Now, this is with oh, the oh, higher-ups? Yeah. Okay, all right. And our our higher-up, and basically was like, hey, you know, the community gave you all this. They gave us this nice indoor facility. We've given you all this. We've given you all that. Mm-hmm. Nobody's winning. Like, Mm. if this continues, then there's gonna be some changes. And I guess at this point, it's kind of like, are we? Are there? Is there bluff gonna get called, or are we gonna find out? Like, Mm -hmm. hey, there's some because, I mean, it's a lot. Yeah, it is. I mean, our boys' basketball program they always do really well. Yeah. Um, but everything else is just kind of mid. Yeah. And like I said, we we have some five and five is the definition of mid. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like I said, that was definitely a. Eight and two, at worst seven three uh, team, and so I mean like I said I don't know we'll see I mean we'll see. So we're recording this on a Saturday. Mm-hmm. Our podcast comes out Monday. Yes. So there's going to be a big change to this show um, come Monday because one of the co-hosts will be an old ass man. Um, by the time you guys hear this show, somebody's going to be thirty five. Who the fuck is that? Well, it's not me. It's not me. Oh, it's um, me. Yeah. That's so, right. <laughs> um, you know, that being a, a special thing, that being a big deal, I think. Yeah. Let's see. Uh oh. If you hit me some silly string, I'm gonna fuck you up on site. I'm hit you with silly string, but I am going to hand you this for the rest of the show. Oh. Um. Yeah. Happy birthday, you birthday prince, you. Birthday prince. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, your head's big as shit. So I wouldn't do that. I just do the string. Let's see. I'm probably going to break it. Well, don't pull it so hard. 
I have to. It's just the way my mechanics are set up in my mind. Oh, the struggle is real. There it is. Yeah. All right. So now we can continue with the show. Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> I feel like a little kid at Chuck E. Cheese or like at Long John Silver's when you get that uh <laughs> when you get that pirate's hat. <laughs> yeah, that is what's going on. Welcome to the Burger King Kids Club. Yeah, sure. So um my week was been why are you taking it off? I guess I'll keep it on. There we go. There we go. So um bit. I don't want to cock block <laughs> myself, you know. Wow. So um it's been one of the craziest weeks for me, mm -hmm. like in this creative space that I can think of. Um, so I get a DM from uh, Daily DDT. And Daily DDT is Fan Sided's wrestling imprint. And Fan Sided is a company that does like sports news and editorials and all that, right? So I get a DM and it's like, hey, um, I've been following your tweets and listening to your shows for a while, um, I'd love for you to come on and be a part of our editorial team. Yeah, well, that's good. And I was like, <clears throat> the first thing I thought was like, thanks. The second thing I thought was, do I have time for this? Like, at all. If there's money involved, you def definitely but, have time. Sure, but it, how much money matters, number one. Mm -hmm. um, but number two, it's like, when I sit back and look at the schedule of stuff that we do, Yeah. And then factor in like actual like real life. Okay. Like it tends to be a lot. So I'm like, and writing is hard. Like writing is not the thing that we do. And no, no I was, granted, most writers can't do this. They can't sit in front of a microphone and be interesting for 45 minutes. True. Right. But what they do is is actually I would say harder because you have to sit down, you have to organize your thoughts. You got to brainstorm and all that. You go back and forth on if. What you even said was super interesting. And True. how is it going to be received? And mm -hmm. how do I need to adjust what I say? It's a lot. And so, I mean, ultimately, I agreed to do it. <laughs> so I said I'm going to do um, one editorial for them a week. Um, yeah, that's reasonable. And yeah, do that for a while, see how it goes. Uh, but, yeah, so shout out to Fansided. Shout out to Daily DDT for – and really, like, the funny part about it is my tweets, like, you saw those – and yeah. that's the guy you want to bring on your platform? <laughs> that's who you want to, to represent your brand. You're edgy. That guy. Oh, I'm edgy, okay. Yeah, all right. You're, uh, you're edgy. You're a minority. Why not? Somebody who listens to this show sent um, sent a tweet that said, uh -huh. uh, <laughs> he sent a tweet that said, oh, I forgot I had a facial tomorrow. And I quote, oh, tweeted, yeah. I quote tweeted and said, dot, dot, dot. Oh, yeah. Like, that's the guy you want. <laughs> I need okay. to, uh, you know, I need to remind her. Uh, but what do you need to remind her of? That she need to come out tomorrow. Okay. With the uh, yeah the people. Yeah, with for my yeah. birthday. So um, we know the vibe. We know what time it is. So that was early in the week, right? Um, there's this uh, lady, Alexis Littlefoot, mm -hmm. and she creates like uh, like wrestling merch. Okay. And it's not like slap a name on a T-shirt. Like she does. Uh, she had this real cool T-shirt that was like Sable, mm -hmm. but it was Sable as Little Kim on the album cover. Like it was dope. Um, she has like Ric Flair branded stuff that has like this really cool crown design that she made on like some caps. Hand drew this uh, this New Day shirt that sold you know a million copies, like a bunch of stuff, right? Okay. So um, she sent out a tweet that was like, "I need to." What did she say? She's like, I need like a Jet magazine for wrestling. So I looked at it and I quote tweeted and I was like, give me a day. And just, you know, it's a one off tweet. And then the next day I made it. Yeah, I saw that. That's pretty dope. <laughs> the next day I made yeah. it. And then like people were like, oh, is this real? I'm like, no. They're like, oh, but make it real though. I'm like, but I don't want to. They know, but do it. But I don't want to. No, do like, it. Well, you know what? Then pay him. And that's what they did. Oh, so, okay. Our five dollar Patreon tier mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. gets you a five page magazine a month with me making a jet magazine version of wrestling called Lit. You hear that? You wrestling incels pay that five dollars. So yeah, it's like yeah, and, and like we already have like a new patron. So like yeah, it's it's super cool. Man, I feel um, so bad. Again, why? Because you're doing all this shit and I'm just like No 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 I'm no. I'm showing up just talking and I go and play video. <laughs> no, no, no. But that's um that, that's, that's dope like, as hell though. That's our yeah. dynamic though. Like that's yeah. that's what we do. So Yeah. 
the fact that you see me doing so much and mm-hmm. would want to help is the help I need. That, yeah. That's it. That's great. Um, so, yeah, so that happened. So for the last couple of years through the torch, I've been doing um, Comic-Con. Like, oh, yeah, we yeah, go to yeah. Comic-Con um, as press. You know, the first year we did um, – we put up the Bailey interview and the uh, the Hardy Boys interviews, and then last year we did the Danny Trejo interview. Oh yeah, um, shout out Danny Trejo. Yeah, and then we did um, yesterday. He, he needs to bring that uh, Trejo's Donuts and Coffees down to Austin. He's he's or at least San Antonio for sure. He's all right in my book. I know. So but it'd be nice. <laughs> so it'd be nice. Um, yeah, this year um, I went Friday night, mm-hmm. and I did it a bit different. Um, like we did the live thing for a minute, and I saw saw Victoria. And I just love Victoria. Oh man, you, um, you sound like such a damn incel on that show. I'm okay I, with that. I, I saw it, and I was just like, "She's, oh my god, <sighs> it's Victoria!" I was like, "She's wow. the best." Um, Go rub one out. Wow, but um, <laughs> what I did was I actually went to a bunch of the third party panels, and it was really interesting how it relates to us. Um, so I actually went to three, and only one of them is kind of related to us. Yeah. Um, the last one I went to, because I do it in reverse order, the last one I went to was this cool presentation on uh, LBGTQ characters in comics. And okay. just kind of about the timeline of it and who was represented right, um, who could use some work. Like, really interesting panel. Um, the second to last one I went to was, like, a um, a sports improv group. Oh, yeah? It was pretty funny. Um, but the first one I went to, it was two young ladies mm-hmm. who were doing a panel on creating fiction podcasts. And it was really like a, a cool listen. Like of course, like I go in there and like I don't say that like we do this thing on any type of like scale, but I'm just just soaking up game. Oh, yeah. Um and you know how I said like writers probably can't do podcasts in a lot of cases? Yeah. They could never do what we did. Um and True. the reason I say that, it's really interesting that people who create stuff like that are, well, one, I, I don't want to like dismiss them. What they do is super hard, but they're not get up in front of a crowd and talk to people live about what I do. Oh, they're definitely introverts. They're, they're super introverts. Yeah, and so that's you why people become writers because yeah. you're gonna be left the fuck alone. You could tell I'm how sorry, nervous left the hell alone. You could be tell how nervous they were, like up there talking about the thing they create. But once they start talking about like the characters and the settings, and it was gonna break. Yeah. Have a big ass head. Once they start talking about the characters and the settings and all that kind of stuff, like they really got in their bag. It was super interesting to listen to them. Um, and you know, what we do isn't what Trav and Rich do, isn't what Quincy does. Like it's all a little different. Mm-hmm. Now I want to like have that. I want to have like a serial podcast with like characters and stuff. I don't know who would do it though. I know I'm doing too much. I know, I know. Um, but that was really fun. Um, so yeah. So last night. Mm-hmm. Um, dun dun dun. I like how your eyes lit up. I mean, it's not that. Well, last night I froze my balls off. Last <laughs> night, but please talk okay. about last night. Um, so I come out of Comic Con, mm-hmm. and <clears throat> Texas Toy Museum is having a party. Really? So not Austin Toy Museum. It's Texas Toy Museum now. Okay. Right? Um, so they're having a party, and you know I shoot up there. You know I'm I'm good with them because I've done like the movie events with them and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So I, like, I'm like, hey, what's up, guys? And everybody's cool, and it's real packed. They did a drink and draw um, where they bring in like um, a national artist who like, mm-hmm. draws comics and stuff who goes around to these conventions, and he has you like draw stuff while like they have a, a bar and they're drinking, and you do it for prizes. So it's so, kind of like a painting with a twist, but it's actual, like pa- com- it's but like painting with actual a twist. competition, I yeah, guess. Yeah, exactly, okay. right? Okay. Um, I drew one thing <clears throat> and drank a lot of things. What'd you draw? Um, so he had us draw, he said, what's the most worthless superhero you can imagine? Well, and not an actual superhero, but you create your own. Um, Dildo man. It's, it's funny. Um, <laughs> w- one of the girls I was next to mm-hmm. who was like a football trainer for, uh, the Lubbock area. So she actually like recruited Zach Thomas, funny enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Like, you, where do these stories come from, right? Yeah. So he said, I want you to draw an armadillo. And she she is a lesbian. She she started drawing. I said, ma'am, are you drawing an armored dildo? 
<laughs> and she was. That's it's on dope. my. If you follow me on Twitter, you can see the armored dildo. That's dope. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so no, so I'm there and like I'm you know, I, I drew one thing. Mm-hmm. I, I did uh, enough of the drinking and like they had wine, and so I just kept drinking mm-hmm. wine and kept drinking wine. And then I'm talking to the guys, um, straight like that. So they actually introduced me to to one of the guys who's like. Um, like one of their financial sponsors. Mm-hmm. And he was really cool. And he wants me to talk to a guy who owns some restaurant who's trying to start a podcast. We're going to be doing everything. Why don't they just have us do it for them? They should. But no. Um, We're probably more interesting than them. Well, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know what they want to do. Yeah. Like I, a restaurant we, podcast would be really interesting. But I feel like it might be one of those things where like Joe's project, mm-hmm. we just kind of sit back and produce yeah. And and then just kind of let them do their thing, mm-hmm. um, or it could just be them soaking up game. I don't know. So yeah. so we'll see. Um, okay. Cause, so because like food, I feel like with the food, because I, I figure mm-hmm. if it's a restaurant podcast, it's gonna be about food. But that's more like mm-hmm. you need to visually see shit. Yeah, yeah. Like if you just talk about food, like you're 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 saying shit that means nothing. Well, we'll see. Um, but, I don't know exactly what he <clears> wants to cool, do, though. but it could be a cool show. Mm-hmm. So you want to bring all of this to a hit? Yes. I'm talking to the guys um, that we know, mm-hmm. and I'm like, hey. I'm looking around, and I, I love the venue. Um, you know, it's all, like, toys in giant glass cases, and they got a PS1, and they got a bunch of arcade machines. Yeah. And so the wheels got to turning. I was like, hey, how much to have my birthday party here? And guess how much they said? How much? Free. So guess what? We're having it there. <laughs> Live show. December the 14th. There we um, go. <laughs> Texas Toy Museum, downtown send, Austin, Texas. I'm sending out the bat signal. I'm pretty excited. Like that's I'm gonna excited. be. Um, I, I'm, there are logistics to work out, but mm-hmm. that should be really fun. Are we gonna do a live show that that day? I think we might do a live show that evening. We have. Um, to. I feel like it'll we be should. because we've been trying to do one with an audience. Yeah. What bigger audience than Cam's birthday? True. Um. Somebody was like, "Okay, you're having a birthday party. So who are you going to invite?" And I know what they meant by who. And you know what I said? Huh. It's going to be a good time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. That it's going to be a good response. time for everybody. It's going to be fun. Um, it ain't no fun unless we all get some. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, and we'll actually get a Ninja Turtles machine that works. I'm probably yes. going to beat that three times on my birthday. So I know what I'll beat three times on my birthday. Hey, yo. <laughs> okay. So enough about us. Mm-hmm. Let's get to the news. Yes. We got to start with T.I., man. Eek. We got to start with T.I. So T.I. is doing a podcast. Unleveled head. He gets on the podcast Mm -hmm. and says, um, like they're asking him about, you know, fatherhood and parenting, this and that. Mm -hmm. And he volunteers the fact that he takes his daughter or accompanies her to the gynecologist every year to ensure that her hymen is still intact. What is that going to prove? So that's, (laughs) it's layered, okay? Oh, Um, shit. Some podcasts have been like, you know, I don't have a daughter, so I can't speak to it. And I'm like, well, let's take a step back. Yeah. I don't own a cat, right? Mm-hmm. If somebody was swinging their cat around their head by their tail, I can objectively say that it's a bad thing to do. Yes. I don't have to own a cat <laughs> to know that that's, swinging a cat by its tail true, is yes. bad. Like, yes, like we don't, true. you know. Um, here's what I'll say. Mm-hmm. How you treat sex yeah. As an act mm-hmm. with your children while they're under your house, um, you can't just say there's one way to go about it. Like, I think that part is fair. Yeah. I think that T.I. presents himself as too smart of a person to think maintaining your hymen is what determines your sexual output. <laughs> like, I, you know... <laughs> I'm tr- you see, I'm trying to find a nice way to say this. Like, it's it's absurd. Yes. Like, it's absolutely absurd. Like, he, sh- um, he should have, uh, he needs to sit in my health class when I talk sex ed, when I get the curriculum. Does T.I. check his son's sperm counts? Probably not. I don't think he does that. No. Um, And, and you know, it's, it's so layered. You know, T.I. being a rapper, like, knowing T.I.'s music, it, 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 you can be a great rapper and a great dad. Like, of course you can do it, mm-hmm. but his artistic output and then to have this stance on a woman's sexual health. Because his daughter's 18. Like, that's, that's a grown She's a grown-ass woman. woman. Yeah. She can do what she wants, yeah. Um, it, it's, But at the same time, he also probably sees it as like, well, 
I know who her mama is, and I know how I got her mama. Is Tiny her mom? I or you just so. mean her mom in general? Mm-hmm. Okay. Probably both. I mean, okay. I mean, like I said, if Tiny is her mom, then you know he's probably like he know he knows the he sees the vision, he <laughs> this, knows the vibes, he knows what time it is. Does Tiny look like a blue eyed pit? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a question. I didn't say she did. I'm asking you if she does. <laughs> kind of. Wow. Um. But uh. <laughs> so, but and here's the bigger issue. Yeah. As bad as it is mm-hmm. that you do that to your daughter. Even if your ideas are pure Mm -hmm. to where you're like, I do it for her own benefit to make sure that she's, you know, she has the best possible chance of succeeding in whatever she wants to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's just say that that's the idea. I mean, money could change that, but okay. All that you did was throw it to the wolves. Yes. Because she had to set her IG to private because everybody was in her in her DMs asking her how they can be the one to fix everything. I bet. That's what I'm saying. It's I'll put it like this. And, you know, you and I, we don't have kids. I mean, we don't know of any kids that you may have out there. But, um, <laughs> but no, I, and I've always said this. I've said it once, and I'll say it again. You know, if I ever, if I ever do have kids, because I don't know. I mean, if I get a certain age, I might say, you know what, fuck this. Mm-hmm. But if I were to ever have kids, and especially if I ever had a daughter, I'll put it like this. Jeff Blake told you you got time. He did. <laughs> he did. He really did. But I will say this. Um, I'm prepared for her to suck somebody's dick, and I don't care, and that's fine. Like, that's her choice. As long as she's being safe about it. Your kids are supposed to grow up and have kids. Yes. Like, that's fine. Like, 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 like that's, it, it, yeah. If she's over here like, oh, I'm, let's say, you know, hypothetically she's in high school and she's, like, blowing her boyfriend. Okay, whatever. As long as you're being safe about that shit. So paper like, towels. Sure. So Napkins, whatever. <laughs> but Sar- no, no, sure, wrap, sure. I like I um we I mean we so, like mm-hmm. you said, we don't have kids. Yeah. So it sounds like, well, they don't know like what it is. I'm like, okay, but I know what it's not. I'm around kids I've all seen, the time, y'all. I've I've been around <laughs> listen, I don't have kids. Yeah, I don't either. But I've definitely woke up next to a lot of broken women. And I know how they got there. Yes. It's from, from overprotective daddy. Yes. You gotta yes. you gotta be cool, man. You gotta let let them rumble. Okay, yeah. Let the kids play. Mm-hmm. Okay, so staying along those lines. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a white guy who is basically Teflon up until like two days ago. Okay. Jeff Goldblum, Uh-oh. who everybody loves. Who yeah. you know, I love. I love The Fly. I love Jurassic Park. I I'm love glad he, I'm glad Asian of the Body Snatchers. I'm glad he survived that T Rex. Yeah, yeah. Attack. In mm-hmm. all black, like the Omen. He's yeah, amazing. Yeah. <clears throat> um. And then, you know, his resurgence with, like, Guardians of the Galaxy and him being, like, the flyest dressed white man ever to have lived. So, somebody was asking him about, because he was in a Woody Allen movie way back. Mm -hmm. They were asking him about working with Woody Allen going forward. Here's what he said. What did he say? Goldblum briefly noted that he would be willing to consider working with Allen again if the opportunity came up. I think there is a presumption of innocence until proven guilty, he explained. Later adding that he does think the cultural shift of the Me Too movement, um, which he supports wholeheartedly, has been very, very positive and long overdue. That being said, he still admires Allen's work enough that he wouldn't outright refuse to work with him until he learns something more. Is Woody Allen still producing movies and shit? I thought he'd be, um, I thought he'd be I thought he's dead by now. Woody Allen's still kicking, but Woody Allen's not doing a lot because Woody Allen can't move like everybody else moves yeah. because he adopted and married his kid. <laughs> like... And I think what Jeff Goldblum misses here mm-hmm. is how much of his audience is riding with the Me Too movement. Like, he's popular among that demographic of women. What demographic of women? Women! You know? And so, you know, for you to go up against, like, some of the strong ideals of Me Too, mm-hmm. um, that's... I think he'll be okay because nobody's, I, I, like we like, said, nobody's ever really canceled. Do you think anybody's going to stop watching his films or stop supporting him because of this statement? Yes. I don't think it's enough to make a crazy dent. Like, I don't listen to Kanye at all anymore. Kanye still had the number one album when it dropped. You know? That Jesus King shit? Yes. Gross. So 250K first week. I, I don't, yeah, but, you know, but that's the say. Like, I think some people will stop, but I think most people are going to look past it. But I still think you got to read the room. You got to know your audience. 
Like, yeah. it's disappointing, you know, like mm-hmm. to hear him say that. But, you know, um, man, I guess. Um, okay, so enough about real life. <laughs> Let's talk load management. Okay. Um, Wait, load management? <laughs> We're not on sex anymore. Oh, okay. Oh, I'll so, say like, wait a minute, like what? Um, a couple like, of years my back, my loads are fine. Thank you very much. A couple of years back, mm-hmm. um, before I was working at the current job, I was at the old job. Yeah. My supervisor, my old manager, and my coworker, on a whim, were like, "Hey, let's drive to San Antonio tonight to go to a Spurs game." Okay. All right, let's do it. Mm-hmm. So we get there. Yeah. And Tim, Manu, and Tony are sitting. Okay. Um, Spurs still won. Yeah. Um, and there were people there who expressed their displeasure for those three not playing. I didn't care. Yeah. I got out the city. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I was I was home. Got to go to a game. I thought that was cool. I, I think that as Spurs fans, we are kind of desensitized to it because that's a strategy of us winning championships. Like, it got to a point like where we were winning, but our team was so much older on average mm-hmm. that, hey, they're going to sit tonight. Hey, they're going to sit this game. Hey, nationally televised game? Pop we don't, Pop give a don't shit. care. They're yeah, Pop, Pop's like, fuck it. I, he has five mm-hmm. titles for a reason. I've always kind of been a person mm-hmm. that, like, not that money's not important, mm-hmm. but I don't use money as a reason to think that there should be a certain amount of output with most things. Like, yeah. I think that if a basketball game did not happen, I would be disappointed. You know what I'm saying? Okay. If I pay for a basketball game and there's no game, that's a problem. But as long as you get the money back, it's all good. Sure. Mm-hmm. But if I pay for a game and the players aren't the players that I thought were going to play, I kind of don't feel the same way. Yeah. It just doesn't hit me the same. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um. So I understand. Like, what is this all about? It's about Kawhi Leonard. Mm-hmm. Um. And about him, you know, playing some games and not playing other games. Um. Yeah. You know, people are concerned that. They're going to pay for a game or going to tune in for a game and not see the stars that they tuned in for. I applaud the NBA for creating a league based on stars because Mm -hmm. I think that's how you sell a Giannis jersey to a kid in Miami. Like I applaud that. But I do think now we run into a problem where people aren't tuning in to see teams. They're tuning in to see players. Um, And it's been like that for a long time. that's, That's not new. That's their fault for that. That's the okay. that's that's the fans' fault for that. I'll say that much. Mm-hmm. Like I I, I get it. Mm-hmm. I genuinely understand that you if you go to a Lakers game, damn it, I want to see LeBron. Mm-hmm. I a hundred percent get it. It just doesn't affect me like that. Yeah, you know. And so people, you know, attacking Kawhi, saying he's taking nights off and this and that and the third. My counter to that is this: Isaiah Thomas, not the new Isaiah Thomas, old Isaiah Thomas. Yeah. You know what age he was when he retired? What age? Thirty two. He was younger than us right now when he retired from his career. Okay. Um, Michael Jordan retired three times. True. Like, so, not that baseball is not super hard, but I think that Michael Jordan taking, you know, a year or two off from basketball bought Michael Jordan some time. Um, I think that, you know, even as long as he was able to be a wizard, you know, him retiring, you know, after the uh, 98 season, Mm -hmm. like, bought him some time, you know, um... I don't have a problem with it. If a, if players played every other game for a season, I would not be disappointed. Really, it means you need to shorten the damn season. I would say if you want to make sure that everybody plays, like all the main players or whatever, mm-hmm. if they're going to play every game, then what the league needs to do is, number one, like you said, shorten the season, mm-hmm. get rid of these back-to-back nights. There shouldn't be back-to-back. Yeah, get rid of that. Yeah. Get, get rid of uh, – I'd even say go as far as get rid of Christmas uh, Christmas games. Absolutely. You know, they, Sit your they ass have, down, they, but yeah, go be with they, your family. Yeah, go be with your family. Yeah. They have families, too. You yeah. know, they got kids, too. You know, let, let them do that. And, yeah, you know, maybe if you shorten down to, like, what? Because all they need is, I would say all they need is 50 games. Mm-hmm. You know, you shorten down to 50 games, get rid of back-to-back, then you know what? There's no need to sit down and rest. Yeah. There's no need, you know, have them play, like, you know, if they play Monday, the next time they play is maybe, like, Wednesday or Thursday. Sure, the calendar year might go a little bit longer, but you know what? Fuck it. Shorten preseason. There's no need for preseason. The Warriors were a wild anomaly to go 73 and 9. Like so many things had to happen. Yep. And ultimately, what did it get them? Jokes. Yep. You know what I mean? They're so all hurt. <laughs> it got them No, it got them jokes. Like we yeah. made fun of them for getting for doing that much and mm-hmm. then losing. Mm-hmm. So, I don't think that anybody's goal growing up playing basketball is to beat the Bulls record of 70 
of 72 games and a championship. Yeah. I don't think anybody cares. I think they want to play basketball. They want to win titles. They want to get a lot of money. Yeah. And, I mean, at the same time, like, you know, as a player at Everett, they got to look out for themselves, number one. Hell yeah. Because. Or oh, you'll retire at 32. Or you'll be like Larry Bird. This is the craziest thing I've ever heard. Mm-hmm. Back when, you know, everybody was playing every game and, oh, He-Man. Yeah. Larry Bird never played a full season after the age of 26. Like, because you're killing these people. He was getting his ass billed by a, um, what's his name, uh, Lambeer and shit. Bill, Bill Lambeer <laughs> yeah. was hitting him, with Lambeer. Rock, hitting him with the rock bottom on the way to the damn, yeah. <laughs> on the way to a layup. Yeah. Yeah, so, nah, man, we got we to gotta leave these kids alone, man. Yeah, let just, them take just, games yeah. off. Let them play. Let them take games off. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if you're only going just to see one specific person, joke's on you. You're a, you're a freaking idiot. Stop being a groupie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Stop being a bopper. You know what? Um, yeah, just cut it out. So it is week 10 in the NFL, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So if you played one game, if you played week one, mm-hmm. and now it's week 10, that means you've missed – Eight or nine game checks, right? Yeah. Let's say you didn't get paid for two months. I feel like you're going to be nice to people who might be willing to give you money if you didn't get paid for two months. Yeah, I'll I feel be like extra if, you, nice to if you were upset with an employer, maybe about how they were treating you, mm-hmm. and then they didn't pay you for two months, there's a chance that you might ease up on them a little bit and yeah. try to get on the same page. Yeah, kind of have to. The latest on Antonio Brown. Oh. Antonio Brown tweeted out, I'm just very frustrated right now with the false allegations and slander to my name. I love football and miss it. I just want to play, and I'm very emotional about that. I'm determined to make my way back to the NFL ASAP. That sounds like a nigga who's broke. (laughs) Like, one, I've seen Antonio Brown tweet. Mm -hmm. He didn't type that. Like, he might have hit the send button, but he definitely handed that to his agent, and he handed it back to him. Um, I mean, it's like we (laughs) talked about. You know, imagine getting a – I think Antonio Brown's 32. Yeah. 31 or 32 Mm because he's born in in 88, so he's 31, 30. Yeah, he's about 31. So you've been getting a game check steady for eight years. Where does that money go? I mean, you've seen that haircut. You get a Lego cut. That that might be a game check. Uh, but no, I mean he has you know he has kids and properties and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, and like I said uh, last Sell week and the week before, and kids. Well, no. t- t- not as easy just to be like okay, no. but but no. So you sell the kids? Oh my god. So um, like I said though, um, it's unfair to assume that just because people make a crazy amount of money, they don't live ch- check to check. Mm-hmm. And so it's not me pocket watching. It's me saying this sounds like the verbiage of somebody who really needs some money. Because, you know, life is expensive, especially when you live an expensive life. Yes. Um, on the flip side, mm-hmm. <laughs> whereas Antonio Brown wants to get back in um, and he's being nice to his employer, Trent Williams, not so much. Now, um, I'm a known fan of the Washington Football Consortium. I really appreciate the players. Mm-hmm. I appreciate the city that I'm from. I appreciate my family's specific fandom. What I don't appreciate is any of the white skins in the front office. So we talked about this on, I think, last week's show or the week before, about how Trent Williams found, like, you know, basically like an abrasion or tumor in his in his head, went to the team doctor about it. They said it was no big deal. Um, turns out, um, it was cancer and could have killed him. Yeah. So they got rid of it. So he's fine now, but you know, he was on like the, on IR Mm -hmm. or the PUP list. Somebody smarter than me knows. You know what they did after all this, after they almost killed the guy, voided his contract. And put him on that non-football list. They put him on the non-football list. And so he's not getting paid for this season. That's crazy. 5.1 million. And it's not like... Like all due respect, and it, just I, when you think you can't, you can't hate Dan Snyder anymore. He's not like Quentin Dunbar, who I like. I'm just talking about the value of a Quentin Dunbar and the value of a Trent Williams. Okay, yeah. Trent mm-hmm. Williams has been the only good thing about your organization, the steady good thing for a smooth ten years. He's been the best left tackle in football for a, a few years. 
Yeah. Um, now, when I say a few years, I don't mean like the last few years, but I mean like he's in that argument every year or so about being the best left tackle in football. Mm-hmm. I, he went to Oklahoma, and I'm talking about him like this. Like That's right, he did. To have the audacity to misdiagnose a person who whose life was in your hands, for him to go through the things he went through, to fight for your organization the way he did, to be a shitty steady organization. part, to be a steady part of your shitty organization. Yeah, you avoid his. You don't pay the man for all you put him through. You specifically. Seriously, when he just when you think you can't find another reason or another way mm-hmm. to hate Dan Snyder, he does some bullshit like this. Like, when when are they going to get Dan Snyder out of here? I don't know. Um, you should be able to fire owners. Yes, they should do that, or you know, Antonio Brown. Maybe the purge should be legal. I guess I don't know. Antonio Brown is probably not going to be very productive at his job on Monday. Mm-hmm. Trent Williams is probably not going to be very productive at his job on Monday. Mm -hmm. They're going to join the millions and millions of people who are going to wake up on Monday, download the Disney Plus app, and fall the fuck off. (laughs) So, yeah, Disney Plus, man, coming this coming week. Mm -hmm. Um, That's right, Monday, yeah. Yo, um, (laughs) this shit is going to fall apart. Niggas are going to get fired for watching Dumbo. Somebody's, Queen Duck. somebody's going to hack it and find Song of the South and sing Dippity Doo Dot at the top of their lungs and get put Zip on administrative leave. <laughs> Millions of little girls are going to finally realize, um, because they're older now, mm-hmm. millions of girls who were little girls yeah. are going to realize that Beauty and the Beast, The Sleeping Beauty, probably not the movies you want to celebrate with how they represent women. Um, a lot of hood niggas are going to send off Lady in the Tramp memes to the girls who are out of their league that are letting them drive their cars. Like, it is going to be <laughs> an amazing Monday. Um, Marvel movies, like, oh my goodness. Um, do you have the Disney Plus app? No. Are you going to let me hold a password? Are you? I was going to ask you, are you going <laughs> to let me hold a password? We got to we gotta get in the group chat, because we know Miles my, is going to get it, so we might have to. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to make a trade with Miles. I, I'll give my Hulu if he what gives you, Disney What Plus. are you watching first? Honestly? Uh, either DuckTales or Tailspin. I'm probably X-Men. But they can have all the movies too, right? Yeah. Oh, shit. I'm probably X-Men or Gargoyles. Like, that's probably going to, like, be the Monday run. Mm-hmm. Um, man, Gargoyles is back. It's so amazing. Um, I'm right there with Darkwing Duck. Um, mm-hmm. Chippendales? I'm watching Chippendale. What? Monterey Jack was a crackhead. Oh, yeah. Cheese. Every time he saw some cheese, he lost his shit. Yeah, he did. He couldn't control it. Yeah, he did. That was dope as that hell. That was a hype. No. Oh. Mm-mm. That was dope as hell. It was something. Um, Yeah, and then, like, I, I re- you know what movie I really appreciate out of, mm. like, all the Disney movies? The Cinder- the live-action Cinderella-, Cinderella with Brandy. I love that movie. Roz loved that movie. It was so good. Roz um, used to also watch uh, That's So Raven. She did. She did. I think, that's gonna, I think that's going to be on there. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it is. Um. Yeah, that that's gonna be a fun day. But yeah, pr- productivity is going down, down, down. <laughs> oh my god. Um, so let's see. Um, that's really about what I have, man. Um, mm-hmm. you know, Trump impeachment. They're shooting for Christmas. Christmas might be lit. Might go into the new year with him out of here. That'd what you think pretty, about that? That'd be pretty dope. I, we would we'd have reason to uh, shoot off fireworks that day. Oh, one other thing. Mm -hmm. So Angela Rye, a political commentator for CNN and other platforms, had Elizabeth Warren sit down for like a conversation. Mm -hmm. And she started asking her those either ors. And it was like, uh, is it Lizzo or Meg Thee Stallion? Or is it somebody and the baby? Is it Popeyes or is it Chick-fil-A? And I was like... Maybe you get the fuck out of here with this bullshit. <laughs> like, uh, Cody Rhodes dropped a t-shirt with him in a fur coat with no shirt underneath, his wife on either side, the No Limit tank on either side, some money, and make him say, uh, on the front. I was like, this isn't it, dog. Like, one, we got to stop 
making these white folks feel comfortable. Like, we have to. And, and people were like, oh, well, it's because Master P brought this company and they've been saying it on being the elite and it's just a joke and why can't you lighten up? Eat a dick. Like, yeah. I, 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 they could just be white and that's cool. Somebody was like, he could just do a shirt with his uh, picture on it with some face paint, you know, like some Braveheart bullshit so, like people always yeah, do. So because somebody was like, so because he <clears> didn't grow up listening to me at X, he can't do a No Limit shirt? Nigga, yes. That's the whole point. Like, yeah. <laughs> if, you're not, if you're not of that culture, like, what are you doing? Yeah. It's, culture si- it's silly. Yeah. Like, you don't come from that. And, as, and, that's, and that's my specific point. Sure, there are billions of white people who bought them damn No Limit albums and cash money and stuff. Mm-hmm. And you know what? They think that shirt is corny. <laughs> like, they think that's some cornball shit. Like, Tony Schiavone and them did, like, a shirt where they were, um, all four of them were, like, members of Death Row. Mm-hmm. And that was, like, Podcast Row. The reason I didn't take a super issue with that, and it's still trash, but yeah. a, a black guy made it. So I'm like, okay, all right, dog. As long as you getting the money off that, like, then that's cool. Like, I, I understand it. Yeah, absolutely. That Cody Rhodes shit is hella corny. And yeah, what's, I've seen and, it. <laughs> and what's the problem? Huh. The problem is they're a company who says stuff like, oh, well, black people are dominating in football and basketball and you know baseball and stuff and track and field. Why aren't they dominating in wrestling? It's because you put cornball shit like that out. Like, it's because when you start doing black shit, mm-hmm. people forget how much they need black people doing black shit. That's what it is. Like, and I like Cody. I think Cody's a passionate dude. I think Cody has some great ideas. Sit your white ass down and let black people do the black shit. And you do the Cody shit. And it'll be cool. Stay in your lane. But let me ask a serious question. Yeah. I, is it a serious question? No, it, it really is. Because okay. I've been thinking about this, mm-hmm. you know. I've been thinking about this for a while, Uh oh. actually. Mm-hmm. So, and I, I think it was one of, it was actually stemmed from uh, last week's uh, episode. Uh-huh. When we were talking. Um... You know how how we mentioned like how WWE, AEW, mm-hmm. all these wrestling organizations they're run by white people. So when are, when at one point does somebody like maybe like Mark Henry mm-hmm. or maybe like Kofi he may say you know what fuck this is that our own shit? Put money together, yeah. yes, put money together, and I mean Master, Master P got one. You know, um, I think that. Another part of that, though, mm-hmm. is because I, I I feel like just personally, mm-hmm. I mean, Kofi's done what he's ready to do. He's already kind of peaked in a way. Yes. Well, I mean, and it's not his fault. Yeah, exactly. It's not his fault. <laughs> it's like, his you know, fault. Yeah, like uh, I said, yeah. like he's already peaked at, at what he can and can't do. Like mm-hmm. you know, it, he's he's not going to do anything else. Mm-hmm. Okay. Unfortunately, like I said, even though he's a great talent. Yeah. Um, Mark Henry had a hell of a career, solid. You know, and they put him some, through some bullshit. Mm-hmm. Um. So at one point, when do like big names like that kind of say, you know what? Let's group our money. Let's get our shit together. Mm-hmm. Let's start our own shit. Because here's the thing: mm-hmm. how can your black ass walk into that TV company and say, "I need a deal"? That's the thing. Mm-hmm. Like you got to remember, a lot of people like black people. Yeah, that don't mean they want to do business with black people. They wow. a lot of people want black people to work for them. Mm-hmm. Work with them, it's it's hard. It's hard. I mean, for, for all the terrible points Kanye made, mm-hmm. for all the terrible points Kanye made, yeah. one that he kind of had was they not let me in, they not let me in the door. I'm selling millions of records, I have millions of dollars, and they won't let me create with them. Like so I understand the premise of what you're saying. And like Well, let me ask you, know, you this mm-hmm. as well. But you gotta assume they want that too. That's yeah. the other thing. But, but, I think, but that's the thing. Yeah. I, I mean, you have to at some point because I mean, if all you can do is just bitch about it on Twitter, you're not you're not well, doing nothing. I'm not. Well, well, they're not bitching about it. No, I know they're not. Yeah. But I'm saying, but just nobody with money. Nobody. Yeah. Yeah, nobody with yeah, money exactly, is bitching okay, about. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. You that's know, the thing. when, it, when yeah. you see like obviously the fans, okay, it, there's no fans, there's no money. Let's mm-hmm. be real. Okay? Sure. So I mean, the, the timeline, it's my timeline's flooded with like you know a bunch of wrestling people, and mm-hmm. all they do is bitch, 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 and, and you know I'm kind of thing. I kind of thought about that, but here's another thing too. Oprah has her own goddamn channel. Sure. Tyler Perry has his own studio. Sure. They're all tight. Why not link up with them? Ty- Tyler Perry presents WCW. Why not? It's possible. That's what um, I'm saying. Like I, I feel yeah. like you know he's in Atlanta. But but you got to understand again, like there are 
it's the the idea that we need a black company is great, mm-hmm. but we also have to remember how many black people and just people of color mm-hmm. are under contract with these white companies, and so you kind of have to get a buyout. You have to want, but you also have to support their dreams. It's it's difficult. Mm-hmm. It's difficult. Like like why not start your own is always a great question. Yeah, logistically, takes time. Because I, I just kind of mm-hmm. I just kind of feel like like right now would be the perfect time for that. I mean, like I said, Oprah has her own goddamn channel. She has her own TV station. Mm-hmm. Tyler Perry has like the biggest studio. Yeah. Shoot wrestling on with Tyler Perry, be interesting. And you know, like I said, you're based in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. That's like the wrestling hub of the world. Well, but the thing about that is, yeah. <laughs> you're based in Atlanta. Tyler Perry Studios. Tyler Perry has a contract with Turner. Mm-hmm. AEW's on TNT. So it's it, it gets complicated. Um. Money. I mean, like I said, T- Tyler Perry's good with everybody. He's good money with everybody. You, you, you think they can tell Tyler Perry no? Hell no, they're not. I would tell Tyler Perry no. I wouldn't. Well, it depends what it is. If he asked me to give him half of my spicy Popeye's chicken sandwich. Oh, um, yeah, I'll definitely tell him no for that. <laughs> Coming up this week. Which that? Oh, no. Oh. No, you good. I said, I kind of broke my heart yesterday, too, because, you know, we, we lost, and I'm, I'm freezing my balls off, and I'm thinking, like, also kind of grossed me out because the year of our Lord, 2019, we're mm-hmm. losing to a fucking team that runs slot T. Like, that's gross. That's nasty. That's very gross. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no. Like, this is disgusting. Mm-hmm. Like, I would never. Any team I've ever coached, we've never come close to losing to anybody. Slot T, wing T, none of that bullshit. Because that is just disgusting. Yeah. Okay. Especially in 2019. So I'm thinking, like, you know what? This game's going fast. I'm freezing my balls off. Popeye's right around the corner. Mm-hmm. Fuck it. I'll go get. I'll, we'll get out in time for Popeye's. Shake the hands, whatever. I get the fuck out. I pull up. There's a little piece of paper like this. It says, sorry, no sandwich, with a poorly drawn, upside-down frown face. <laughs> I was like, motherfucker! That happened to me on Tuesday. Yeah, but, you know, I got the $10 uh, tender box. So. $10 tender. I got, I got two sandwiches yesterday, though. Oh, I, only nice. ate, I only ate one. Um, gave one to my barber. You know. Oh, nice. Oh, in, yeah. in lieu of tip. <laughs> you tipped him a spicy chicken sandwich? God damn. <laughs> Y'all hear this? <laughs> Y'all see this? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what, what the hell is wrong with you? That that. But you know what? That's not as bad <laughs> as uh, a couple years about like three four years ago. Um, I went to I went to go have lunch with uh it was uh me, my friend Coach Esparza, and I think Coach Ramos. Three of us went to go eat at a Chinese restaurant, mm-hmm. and we left uh we we're leaving tips. So I left my cash tip. Coach Ramos left his tip. And as far as like, damn, I don't have any money. Mm. He pulled out a lotto that was that was uh, one five bucks on it and put it in there and told the told real. the waiter I was left my ass. That's off. real. He left a fucking. I, I definitely tipped. <laughs> he left a lotto, <laughs> a winning lotto is a tip. That's real. That's, That's real. Funny. No, he should have left a. He should have left a, a, an unscratched one. <laughs> no, I'm <that was> fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> you should choose your own adventure as tip. <laughs> Wow. Okay. So yeah. Um. Coming up this week, what? South Congress Monday, mm-hmm. Demon Dust Tuesday. We'll see. Uh, Goose down wins. I'm gonna say it. You didn't get one last week because I had to write Goose my first down. editorial. So yeah. it was like, guys, with all the new stuff that we're doing, every once in a while something's gonna fall by the wayside. Um. Mm-hmm. And thank you for understanding. Just never this show. Never this show. No. This is this. We is won't fall by the wayside. You this know everything else may. <laughs> Everything Demon else. Duster, whatever the hell it is, that might fall. <laughs> wow. The yeah. game one, that might fall, but not this. South Congress Monday, shit. Demon Dust Tuesday, Goose Down Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Damn it, I forget it every What's time. What's the fun in that? What's the fun in that? Um, Which was great last week. We got to talk about uh, Mass Effect because um, it was in seven day. Mm-hmm. Mass Effect's the shit. My favorite game By series. By the way, Quincy, I don't play that game. You corny. Um, I'm not corny. Such a good series. So, um, yeah, that's what's coming mm. up this week. Um, questions, comments, and concerns, southcongress at gmail.com, southcongress with a K. Um, whatever platform you listen to this show on, please show um, some love. leave us a five-star review. You know, damn well we're worth it. Um, mm. Stay in touch for the birthday announcements. Like, that's going to be yeah, pretty be excited dope, about y'all. that. Um, and, yeah. For those, uh, you know, Twitter followers in Texas, mm-hmm. y'all might want to come through for that one. Yeah. And then, um, Craig, flying for that. You yeah. can stay at my place. Last but not least, we work forward to celebrating your birthday tomorrow. Yes. It should be a good time. All the eeks. Um, you know what kind of cake you want? 
It doesn't matter. This is South Congress Podcast, episode 88. My name is Cameron. I'm Isaiah. And we're out. Bye.